Lord God. And we thank you and we praise you. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray and say amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to Power Service. Amen. Hallelujah. Singers, come up. We just, oh, God is good. Amen. Amen. All the time. Hallelujah. Amen. Truly is so good. Yes, Without him, where would we be? Amen. amen. I can look back in my life and see how many times I'm supposed to be dead. And, and, and definitely I know that we, I'd be burning in hell. Come on now. This is the truth now. But God. Amen. Hallelujah. But God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for all that you're doing in each and every one of our lives. Hallelujah. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. before you. Bless you Lord. We ask for your forgiveness, Lord, for the things we've done Hallelujah. this day. We set aside all the things, Lord God. Hallelujah. Burn Bless away the things that are pleasing glory. to you, Lord God. Glory, glory. Just Hallelujah. have your way in this Hallelujah. place tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
consume me. My heart is ready. God, if I burn, I burn for you. Without hesitation, no reservation. God, if I burn, I burn for you. A fresh, fresh fire. A fresh, fresh fire. I'm gonna burn for you. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. I want a new desire. I'm gonna burn for you.
glory. Bless your holy name, Father. We thank you for this day. We thank you for keeping us through this day, for bringing us through this day, to this time right now, for such a time as this. We thank you for bringing us here safely to our sanctuary, Lord, for this service. We thank you for the word coming forth. Father, we thank you for the gathering center, Father. We thank you for our main sanctuary. We thank you for the children in the gathering center, the teachers and the helpers. We lift up security to you, Father, post, Father. We lift up Apostle Rocky, Pastor Bobby, Benaya. We ask that you would bless them and keep them, Father, continually, Lord. We thank you for the associate pastors and their families, Lord. We thank you for the youth pastor and the worship pastor and their families, Father. We thank you for your missionary and his family as well, Father. We thank you for each and every family represented here in this place, Father. Standing in the gap for those, those lost loved ones, Father. We lift up the brokenhearted to you, Father. We lift up those that need a healing, Father. We bind infirmity and rebuke you right now in the name of Jesus. Cast it out by the power of the blood. And we ask, Father, that you release your peace, your love, and your joy that gives us strength, Father. We thank you for all that you've done, Father, all that you're doing, and all that you will continue to do, Father. We lift up our, our nation to you, Father, in the United States of America. We ask for mercy, Lord. We thank you, Father. We lift up the, the families still hurting from Lahaina, Father, that you would bless them and comfort them, Father, and that you would strengthen them as well, Lord. We pray for the nation of Israel, Father, we lift up, and we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Father. We lift up the nation of Israel to you, Father. We thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for keeping your word, Father. We love you, Lord, and for all that you have done and providing for us, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for just the breath of life, Lord. We thank you for your love, Father, your grace, and your mercy, Father. We bless you. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and say, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. All the time. Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy, Father. We bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. Welcome to Wednesday Night Power Service. Hallelujah. Whoo, glory. Glory. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Come on, guys. It's my song for tonight. I told Satan. Get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Woo! Is victory yours today? It should be. You guys should be excited. You should be excited for the victory that we get every day, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joy. Joy is mine. Is joy yours today? Peace. Peace is mine. Hallelujah. Come on now. Come on now. Love. Love is mine. Thank you, Lord, for loving me, even uh, when I'm unlovable. <laughs> I know only me, but praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, everybody, for sowing into my life, to my family's life, into my church family's life as well. Hallelujah. It's, uh, it's amazing to see the seed continually being sown and the harvest continually being reaped. Hallelujah. In this house, in this ministry, in our church. Amen. Hallelujah. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for our online family joining us tonight. Apostle, Benaya, Pastor Bobby, hallelujah. Love you guys. And um, just excited to be in the house. Always excited to be in the house. I mean, you know, not e even not having a Monday night prayer meeting. I was like, where have I been? You know, that's just me. <laughs> it's like, where have I been? A little bit lost. You know what I mean? Hello. Get it together, brother. Praise the Lord. <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you for this service. Bless you, Lord. We turn unto the seed sowers, Father. A thousandfold, Lord. We thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your humility, Father. Holy Spirit, have your way in me. Have your way in this place. All of you and less of me to deliver this word in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, you guys see the title tonight? Hallelujah. Let's battle. Let's battle, guys. Come on. Paul, talk already. Enough talk. You know,
know, that's what they say in the streets, that the quiet ones are the most dangerous ones, yeah. So, we've been quiet long enough, I think, church. Churches of God have been quiet long enough. I think it's time for us to battle. Amen. Let's battle. Woo, amen, brother. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's battle. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, yes. Amen, Reverend Ty. I did get the call. <laughs> I was at work yesterday, and I got the apostle called, and um, I mean, keeping me on my toes for sure. Had some intense calls, had some, uh, had some uh, strange calls, had some uh, calls that were caught me off guard, like yes, yes, uh, yesterday, yes, caught me off guard, and um, uh, not not that I wasn't prepared, because we should always be ready in and out of season, amen. But uh, I just felt myself, because usually I'm like, I, ch- I try to ponder on, on on a word or or something that was shared or imparted, and uh, uh, just be prepared. And when I got the call, I was I was working and just you know washing a parking lot where I, where I was stationed at, and um, it never really hit me <laughs> until after I got I hung up the phone. I was like, oh shucks. Apostle sh- shared that I'm preaching tomorrow, <laughs> so I had to like, oh, and so I I just remembered the Sunday message and looking at the picture of the mountains. So I even look at the hills, and help came. Hallelujah, <laughs> Hallelujah! Give God some praise. I was looking at the West Maui mountains and I said, Lord, uh, I need help, and help came. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I was thinking about uh, the Lord brought to my spirit of uh, that song on Caleb, um, "You've Already Won." Look at your neighbor and say, you've already won. Hallelujah. Who wants a victory? Who wants a victory? I want a victory. Say, I want a victory. Look at your neighbor and say, do you want a victory? Look at your other neighbor and say, I want a victory. Hallelujah. Look at the Lord and say, let's battle. Woo, let's battle. Hallelujah. As, our, as the blessed preacher on, on Sunday said on Sunday, you know, we cannot get a victory without a battle. You cannot get the victory without a battle. So if you're wondering why you feel the way you feel sometimes or, or even right now, not excited or maybe you are excited inside, sometimes we got to let the devil know that we're excited. Why? Because the victory is ours. The victory is, is through our Father as we learned on Sunday. Amen. Ooh, come on now. Thank you, Lord. You cannot have a victory without a battle. So what does that mean? Got to fight. Got to fight, guys. Got to battle. Hallelujah. Got to do something. Because Satan tries to condemn us for our failures, tries to convince us that in order for our Father to love us, we got to be perfect. And that's a lie. Because only our Father is perfect. Hallelujah. The song of the, that song, you already won, the chorus says, I'm fighting a battle. I'm fighting a battle that you, you already won. Our Father, that Jesus has already won. No matter what comes my way, I will overcome. No matter what comes your way, you're going to overcome. So pick your lip up off the ground like my dad would say. Get yourself together. Go do what you got to do. Go to work with a smile on your face because you already won. There's no, there's no time for, like we was shared on Sunday, no time for pity parties, no time for sad stories, because you already won. i never seen a winner like this. Oh, brother, you won. Yeah, I won. If you ever seen a winner like that, just throw some water in the face or slap him around a little bit. Because, I mean... Like, I always talk about being in sports, and, you know, to hear it's, it's not always about winning, and it's not. Because sometimes we got to learn a lesson. we got to learn a lesson in the loss. If we never lose, we don't, learn, we don't learn nothing. But let me tell you, it feels good to win, eh? Oh, man, it feels so good to win. Especially when you beat the devil at his own game. That's why Pastor Bobby always pounding the worship. Why? Because he no can do that no more in heaven. Why? Because we already won. So when you, it's, let me tell you, beating, winning is fun. But beating somebody at their own game, whoo, just a little bit more sweet, guys. A little bit more sweet. I don't know, that's just me. 
That's just me. When you when you beat somebody at something that they're good at, ooh, little bit more dance. Should be a little bit more excitement. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we're fighting the battle, guys. Every day we wake up, we're fighting the battle. From the moment you open your eyes, that's why Apostle Shea is rolling on his knees. Amen. As soon as you open your eyes, the battle is on. Sometimes in the sleep, no can sleep, no can get up sometimes. Maybe that's just me, praise the Lord. Whether it's so, whether, you know, the principalities in the air is just falling me down, you know what I mean? You know, you're trying to stay up and like, you know. But you battle every day. Whether you like it or not, whether you think so or not, whether you believe it or not, you're battling every day. And if you're just going to sit down and take it, sorry, we can't wait for you. Jesus is coming. Jesus is on his way. Hallelujah. And I, I was reading this, just the, you know, they have like on Caleb, they have the story behind the music. I kind of read some of the story behind the music. And it says this, the battle, the battle is ours to fight. Plenty of us sitting on like, oh, nah, Jesus get him. No, he did him already. On the cross. He did it already. The battle is ours to fight. We don't want supposed to be fighting a battle. It's just like if I go, if I get pushed into the ocean, you know, my uncles and all my dad laughing at me from the boat, they don't get swim for me. I got to swim. Just like the battle. God already, Jesus already defeated the enemy on the cross. It's our turn to battle. We on this earth, we should, should be battling every day. Oh, come on now. The battle is ours to fight. But as many have said, we are not fighting for our victory. We are fighting from his victory. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say that again. We are not fighting for our victory. We are fighting from his victory. Yes, I have to read that three times because, you know, the natural uh, English and the natural mind says, Fighting for his victory. No, we're fighting from his victory. I need you guys to understand that fighting from the victory of our Father. Fighting from the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not for it. Come on now. Hallelujah. The difference is when we fight for his victory, when we fight for his victory, for his victory, we still end up trying to prove ourselves. When we fight for fight for God, when we think when we think when we think, oh, I'm fighting for God. I'm doing this for the Lord. I'm doing this for the kingdom of heaven. Well, to me already, it sounds like I'm trying to prove something. Already, the pride kind of coming up a little bit. Because I'm doing this for the Lord. I'm doing this for the church. I'm doing this for the pastors or whatever it might be. Hallelujah. Praise God. When we fight for his victory, we, we end up trying to prove ourselves. In the end, we're trying to prove what we're doing. When we fight from his victory, we acknowledge he already has proven himself holy, worthy of all. When you fight from the victory that God has given you, when you fight from the victory that Jesus did on the cross... He's saying, you, Holy Father, you are worthy, Father. We worship you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Give him some praise. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Let's go to the word. Hallelujah. Woo. Oh, I like battle, guys. I like battle. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, in the contemporary English version, here on the screen here, let's read together. One, two, three. Every child of God can defeat the world, and our faith 
is what gives us this victory. Woo! Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your victory, Father. And we thank you for the strength and endurance, endurance that you give us each and every day to battle, to battle, to battle against the principalities of power and darkness in this world. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name we pray and say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's like the preacher said on Sunday, he shared, this year God's children will be blessed in spite of themselves. Like you think about it, it's like, wow. You mean even if I mess up? Yeah, repent and get back in the battle. Even if I do something wrong, yes, ask forgiveness. Get back in the battle. Get back in the battle. Don't just sit down. Don't just go and pout on the bench. Like Apostle shares, stick by the coach. And you know what? One of my uncles told me that one time. And um, up until my freshman year, I only played baseball. Baseball. My first year of playing football was my freshman year. And he told me that. He said, even though you don't play, yeah, follow the coach. Eventually, he can put you in. I never listened. I'm not going to make up any excuses why. But let me tell you, he did call. I wasn't by him. And he was yelling, Kupua, Kupua. And I was like, oh, I was, it's so loud. I don't hear nothing. What I was doing, I was sitting on the bench. Yeah. And I remember that too because I, 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 it was one of those, you know, those regrets in life because my grandma was there. And that was the last game she ever see me in for playing football. And um the next season she was already she already passed. I praise God that she's in heaven. Hallelujah. But amen. Hallelujah. But we miss out on those things. When we don't listen. Yeah. When we're just sitting on the sideline, when we're just sitting on the bench. Instead of standing up. Instead of encouraging your brother, encouraging your sister, instead of encouraging your team, instead of listening to the elders. Hallelujah. In the fifth verse, it says, and who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the son of God. So we have to believe that Jesus is the son of God. And it's coming against the sin of the world. Not against those that need help. Not against those that are in the community that need help. Not against families that lost everything. It's against sin and darkness in the world that we come in against. Amen? And there's a lot of it, if you're not aware. There's a lot of it. So, just, so, so to just sit down and do nothing? Woo. But that would say, if you don't do nothing, then you, you can get run over. And I got run over a couple of times. It's not fun. <laughs> we go back up to the first verse. First John chapter 5. And in the first verse it says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. We know we love God's children if we love God and obey his commandments. Loving God means keeping his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. I mean, we're running out of excuses, family. We're running out of excuses to wake up with a sour attitude. We're running out of excuses to complain. We're running out of excuses to grumble. We're running out of excuses of not... Of, of why we're not battling? Why we're not fighting? Why we're not coming against the darkness? Why we're not coming against evil? Why we're not coming against sin? We're running out of excuses. That's what I, I, I learned from this song. But I do this every day. Hey, you're already one. <laughs> how, how are we going to complain when we already won? Look at your neighbor say, you're waking up a winner every day. Hello. 
Jesus help me. Jesus help me. When you wake up sore, you say, yes, I'm a sore. I'm a, I'm a winner in pain. I don't know. But we shouldn't be waking up with stinky attitudes. When you open your eyes and you wake on your bed and you're looking up at the ceiling, I don't know, maybe put good morning, winner, on the roof. I don't know. Oh, man. How that with no more excuses? It's uh, 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 no more excuse? What are you going to do today? Oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, well, first of all, you already won. Battle. The verb def definition of battle. To engage in combat between individuals or armed forces. To engage in battle. Fight. Oh, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Ah, oh, come on. You're a child of God. We need to fight against sin. We need to fight against the devil. We need to fight against spirit in the spiritual realm of against darkness. And everything that is that goes against our Father. Intense word on Sunday. Deep. Number two, to contend with full strength, vigor, skill, or resources. Struggle. So even in the struggle, yeah, we struggle. I'm not saying it's Everything is peachy. We know it's not perfect. But even in the struggle, still a winner. Oh, man. Woo, glory, Lord. Even in the struggle, still a winner. Even when I get the bill that says final notice, I'm still a winner. Even when the car goes, ding, almost empty, I'm still a winner. Even when we get that guy at work, da, 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 I'm still a winner, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Woo, glory. The struggle. Hallelujah. Number three, to fight or struggle against. It's like in the streets, they say, you know, if you let somebody come in, if you let the bully come in to your house, Slap your wife, slap your kids, eat your dinner, walk out. No, do nothing about it. Expect for him to come back the next day. Why? Because you never do nothing. You never fight. You never battle. You never defend. You never put up your put up your hands to protect your home. Come on now. Number four, to force, thrust, or drive by battling. Whew. Church, you got to battle. We got a battle. We can battle on our knees. We, could, we can battle with our hands lifted. We can battle in, in our praise. Hallelujah. As children of God, we've all, like, sorry, getting ahead of myself. I like, I like fight somebody. Or, you know, <laughs> oh, man. So many times I remember, you know, my dad stopping on the side of the road for help anybody. And you know that you guys know crazy why and I they're still in the head in the headlines of news on local news. Teenagers shooting each other. And I remember driving to and from church. And my dad would just pull over on the side. And and sometimes he would just say, put your guys' head down. I don't know what happened when we put our head down. You know? All I hear is yelling, people, you know, screaming at each other, and then all of a sudden it's quiet. And um, but he would he would never just drive by. He would never just pass and be like, "Oh, I gotta go to church." He would stop and see because there's people that need help. Even an accident coming home, how many accidents they stop on the side of the road? Kids falling off the the bed of the truck, everything just. I remember my dad kept flares in his in his car too and everything. We'd have to direct traffic and just just all kinds of stuff. People don't these they don't do that. Oh, not my problem. Just keep going. 
That's not us. That's not the children of God. We are here to help. We are here to battle. We are here to fight against the wickedness, man. It's just so wicked. Help us, Jesus. And as we see in these, in these definitions, all of these definitions require an action. Say action. It requires us to do something. Look at your neighbor and say, do something. It requires us to get involved. Oh, man, I don't like getting involved. Get involved. Find out what's happening in your house. Find out what's happening in the community. Find out. Help us, Jesus. Some battle phrases. Do battle. The first thing I thought about when I when the Lord ministered this title to me is, and I actually wanted to put up, but you know, praise the Lord for uh, wisdom and humility. But you know, like BJ Penn says, just scrap. Oh, <laughs> oh, we stay in Hawaii, or what? You know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> I was just saying, just scrap. Why are you talking about it? Because we've been talking too long already. Help me, Jesus. Do battle is to engage in a fight or struggle. Number two, have to battle. This one took me back to when I was small kid time. G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe. Knowing is half the battle. Amen? Knowing. Knowing what? Knowing what your word says. Knowing the rights that you have. Knowing the power that you you hold in the name of Jesus by the power of the blood. Amen. Knowing. Knowing what's going on in your church. Yes. Hallelujah. Half the battle. An important and necessary part of doing or achieving something. Three. In the heat of the battle. Ooh, that's, that's kind of an intense one, eh? Because sometimes you get friendly fire, eh? Or maybe just my house. In the heat of the battle, eh? Because I stay, I stay struggling and I get frustrations and I get things going on, work, home, all of that. And then all of a sudden, in the heat of the battle, start screaming at everybody. Oh, take it easy, brother. <laughs> Time out. <laughs> Time out for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So in the heat of the battle, we have to seek our Father. We have to look to our Father. We have to ask our Father. We have to, we have to spend time. Even in the craziness, we have to make the time. We have to take the time. Hallelujah. And number four, sometimes we just got to battle it out. I think we had number four already, guys. We just got to battle it out already. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta praise harder. We have to praise harder, pray more, pray against the the kingdom of darkness. I even hate saying that, but that's what it is: kingdom of darkness and just just blanketing the earth. We gotta realize and acknowledge that, amen. Battle it out to engage in a prolonged fight, argument, or struggle. This is a prolonged fight, guys. Until we go home to Jesus, until we go home he to heaven, we're going to be battling it every day. Yes. Just like I said in the beginning, we're going to be battling every day. Hallelujah. As children of God, we've all experienced these areas of, of, or phases of battle. Whether individually, simultaneously, or for some of us all at once. Some of us, we, we, we in a battle, it just feels like a war, just coming, all angles. One thing after another, after another, after another. That's why I'm blessed by this, this worship song because it reminds me, wait a minute, wait a minute, I already won. What do you think? Ah, I'm not going to go to church tonight. Ah, I work, whatever. Stop and remind yourself, wait a minute, I already won. Look yourself in the mirror and say, you've already won. We have to remind ourselves. Hallelujah. Yes. And if you are still alive and breathing today, you should be more excited and test 
and more excited in testifying to God's goodness. We should be testifying to God's goodness. We should be sharing the goodness of God. We should be witnessing the love of our Father. Hallelujah. Revelation 12, 11 should be increasing in power. Every day we wake up, every time we come home, at the end of our busy days, and every opportunity that presents itself to glorify our Father in heaven, every day we have something to testify about what God has or is doing in our lives. The blood will never lose its power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blood will never lose its power, but without the testimony, we won't get the fullness. We need the fullness. You know the song? Never, never lose its power. The blood will never lose its power. But we want the fullness. How do we get the fullness? By a testimony. We got to share the victories. We have to share the things that God has done in our lives. We have to share apostle continually in training, in fellowship, continually sharing the victories. Victories. We're too busy looking at the story. But we realize, wow, that's a victory. Yeah? You know, some of us, we kept track. Yeah, we, 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 we like... You know, we play something, one game, or, you know, whether it's, you know, shoot basketball. Ah, we just go shoot around. Nah, let's keep score. Well, we just, we just, we just, we just uh, having a good fellowship, you know. Nah, nah, what is that? You guys get three, we get five, all of that. All of you. We're too busy looking at the story. We forget about the victory. The people testifying and sharing their testimonies. The victory, they're sharing the victory of what God has done. In their lives. The victory from the Father. Hallelujah. That's where the fullness comes. The fullness, as soon as somebody shares their testimony, the fullness comes in. That's when we're like, yeah, oh, God did that for you. Oh, man. And when we have the right attitude, bro, we, we get excited. You should be getting excited. How many times are you going to say that? How many times are you going to say you should be excited? You should be excited because what God going to do for you, if he did that for your sister, if he did that for your brother, if he did that for your son, your daughter, what, can, what more can he do for you? Ooh. The blood will never lose its power. But without the testimony, we won't get the fullness. I want the fullness. I want the fullness. I want to overcome. Hallelujah. I want the katush. Some of you old enough to know the katush. Uncle Larry Price used to talk about the katush when he used to uh, uh, comment, do the commentary for the high school games at the Aloha Stadium. And there were certain things about the katush. Not everybody gave one katush. Even though you see them, boom, they hit the guy. Ah, uh, he would rate them. Then they would ask you, Coach, is that is that a katush? Oh, that's not a katush. The katush is when you hit the guy, then you drive him into the ground, then when you get up, you step on him, and then you walk, and then you continue on with the play. Those are the three requirements for one katush. I like one katush. I like katush the devil. I like hit him, pile him, drive him into the ground, step on him when I get up and dust my feet off like that after. I don't like just hit him. I like him. I like hit him and him remember. Unfortunately, I was on the receiving end of some of those katushes. That's why I kind of am the way I am. Praise <laughs> Hallelujah. But no, if we don't, if we don't encourage our family with the victories that we receive from our Father, we won't get the fullness. That's why I'm so blessed that Pastor Bobby in the programs, in the special services, has those moments, has those, those times sectioned off for testimonies. And it's sad that we have to be put in that place. I'm not talking about anybody that shared, but I'm sad that we have to, I mean, Pentecostal, you know, growing up was, okay, testimony time. 
And then if nobody stand up, the pastor Lowe would call somebody out. You, stand up, testify. <laughs> because we should be excited to want to share. To want to share and witness what God has done. And the victories that he, that he, that we, he gave to us. Amen. Lift your hand and say, I want the fullness. Say, I want to I wanna overcome. And I want to katush the devil. Woo, we get katush tonight, bro. Hallelujah. Whoo, glory. Thank you, Lord. In John 16. John chapter 16, he shares. New Living Translation reads, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. King James Version says tribulation. But take heart. Or in the King James says, be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. He already overcame the world. We, we have everything we need. For every, every day we battle, we have everything we need. It's not like you can question the Lord and say, oh, I, I know I'm a winner, Lord, but oh, how am I going to do this? Just get up and put up your dukes, man. Hallelujah. Because he overcame the world. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verse 35 through 39 reads in the King James, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor this, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. Praise you, Lord. I'm going to read it again in the New Living Translation. I like the King James for this because, just because of that one line, nor any other creature. So nothing. Not even how the guy, people talk about aliens. No other creature. So if you're worried about that, don't worry about it. Hallelujah. <laughs> no, it says, nor any other creature shall separate us from the love of God. Even the creatures we don't know about. Hallelujah. But in the New Living Translation, it reads, can anything separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or, or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? I'm going to stop there because it's to me when I was reading this, to me, was like, we definitely have no excuse to not get up and want to fight for the kingdom of heaven. Through all of that, we have already won, and God loves us. Ooh, sweet deal. Unbelievable. And it just, I was just thinking, about, I was like, man, I really got to watch myself because for complaining about the littlest things, the stupidest things, to argue about the silly things. We depreciate the victory. Forgive me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. As the scripture says, for your sake, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, 
nor our fear, nor our fears for, for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Who wants a victory? Who wants a victory? Say, I want a victory. I want a victory. Look at your neighbor and say, you want a victory? Look at your other neighbor and say, I want a victory. Look at the, the person in the back of you. Say, we're going to get a victory. I know you guys all wanted to tell the family online too. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah, church. It's time to go to work. Let's battle. Amen. When you wake up tomorrow, tomorrow, whether it was a nice sleep or a rough sleep, Lord, I'm ready to battle. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm ready to battle. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. As it says, I'm fighting a battle that you've already won. No matter come what comes my way, I will overcome don't know what you're doing, but I know what you've done. I'm fighting a battle that you've already won. Hallelujah. And just think about it, man. I think about it like, man, if I understood this when I was younger, I think I would have more, a, a better attitude at, at any competitive area that I, I, I've known. Because I think about like, like how Joshua and Caleb, they understood that they already won. That's why they were able to go into the Jordan and beat all of those tribes. Because they knew and they understood that even though they had to fight it, look at that. God still the day for Joshua. Ooh, come on. Come on, tell me you're not excited about that. Tell me you wouldn't be happy that, oh, yeah, what you let me do that? Take them out. Okay. And just go. Why? Because you know you've already won. I mean, if I understood that, I mean, look at Elijah. Go ahead, go ahead. Call your God. Woof. Why? Because he knew he already won. Our God is undefeated. Unbeatable. Hallelujah. You can wake up in courage knowing that you've already won. And we shouldn't grumble about the things that we have to do or, or should be doing for our Father. Yeah. Hallelujah. And of course, Jesus. Even saying, can this cup pass from me? But he knew the victory. He knew the end result. He knew the victory from his Father. And still went to the cross. Even in our sin, still went to the cross. We have to get excited, church. Because the battle is already, the, the victory is already our fathers. And from him, oh man. That's how we obtain the things that we need to, to, to accomplish kingdom work here on earth. Because there's still a lot of things that have to be done here on earth. Sorry, you're not going to have lunch break. Jesus is not going to uh, not gonna, uh, approve of lunch breaks. We're going to be battling. We're going to be working until he come back. We're going to be battling and working until we go home. Because there's no room to sit down on the sideline. There's no room to just sit around and do nothing. With the intensity and the wickedness of this world. Again, we're not coming against people or overcoming people. We're overcoming the, the, just the destructiveness and the weak, wickedness whoo, of this world. Because in all of that, we still have to, we have to still show God's love. The love of Jesus. Hallelujah. But we have. He, he has equipped us. That's, that's, that's the power of the local body. Amen. That's, that's, the, that's the power of coming to the house of the Lord when the doors are open. Because sometimes we have stuff that we don't even know we had, you know. And then when we hear the word, oh, I, I know that. I get that. I can do that. 
Hallelujah. Instead of letting the devil and, and all his all those devil and the devil and all his demons just do it, running around, running amok and whatever. We know what we have. We know how we can use it to utilize to destroy the, the darkness. And bring forth the life. Amen. Bring forth the light. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. Woo, I want a victory. You want a victory? I want a victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's the word I have for tonight. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the strength. Thank you, Lord, for the endurance that you give us every day, every night, Lord. Even when you wake us up at those early morning hours, Father. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. And we have to remember to accomplish all of that, we have to be children of God. We have to be children of God. And to do that, we have to believe in Jesus. We have to love God. Hallelujah. We have to love Abba, our Father. So if you in in the house or if you're watching online and you never received Jesus Christ into your heart, I'm going to say a prayer soon. If you're watching online and you need to come back to the house, you need to come back to your Father in heaven and receive him again, rededicate your life. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Let's repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. In your name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And if you're online watching and you said that prayer for the first time, please contact, contact us. Let us know. Testify. Testify that you receive Jesus into your heart. Hallelujah. And we, we love to be an encouragement back to you. And if you need a Bible, let us know. Wordoftruthmaui.org. If you want to sow a seed, if you want to give an offering, hallelujah. Wordoftruthmaui.org. Click on the green button. Uh, if you uh, want a section or give a direct offering to uh, Lahaina, there's a section for that too. Um, if you need prayer, Praise God. Hallelujah. We love you guys and we appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And uh, don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, the bell button, and the green give button. Hallelujah. Thank you, online family. God bless you. Apostle, Asababi, Benaya, I love you guys. Everybody watching online, God bless you. Hallelujah.